questions. Samantha from New York City, have you ever been to an award show? We have been to an award show. Not a music award show though. It was a UFC award show and we presented. It was pretty rad actually. Got to meet a lot of rad athletes. <coughs> Janet from Springfield, how's your tour going? When did you find out you were going on tour? Um, I don't know if it was like necessarily a finding out that we were going on tour. It was more like taking one tour, moving it back a year and just kind of waiting to find out when we could go, um, what months we were ready to go. So if that's what you're asking for, like once we saw the grid uh, and um, you know, August, September, October, and then the, the couple weeks that we just hit, like, you know, we were ecstatic. We were just, we were in our houses for a year, like everybody else ready to get out. And we'd been touring for 17 years, so this is all we knew. Um, and it was the year off, like it kind of put everything in perspective. Uh, the shows have been absolutely wild. Everybody wants to be there just as much as we do. Um, the band, I think, is as tight as it's ever been. Uh, you know, like I said, everything's just kind of in a new light. I think for me as a singer and performer, I really worked, took the year off and worked on my vocals and got that straightened out. And I think I've been performing and singing and the band has been playing better than we ever have. So it's been awesome. Serena from Chattanooga, what bands have you toured with that you actually made a point of watching their show? Uh, touring wise, I think Slightly Stupid comes to mind. 311, huge 311 fan. Uh, while growing up, I was like, that was my, one of my favorite bands. It was really cool to share the stage with those guys. And I think the cool thing is festivals. That's maybe not touring, but festivals. We get to see a lot of, lot of red bands. like. Uh, Kings of Leon, I'm a huge fan of. I, I remember one night we went and watched them. Tool was on, I think, a Houston festival that we did. We had to go see that. Um, Run the Jewels is coming up at Riot Fest. I'm gonna go see them. I know Kid Cudi was headlining at Firefly. I went and saw Kid Cudi. So it's like, anytime we play festivals, it's really fun because there's so many good bands on the bills. Uh, Jane from Toronto, what's the most used app on your phone outside of text messages? I think probably the voice memo and the notes. It's just all work, it's all writing, it's all creative, it's all just song titles, uh, lyrics, you know, even the lyrics that I write. Um, I wanna get back to writing them on paper because I think it's cool of having them, but I, you know, write usually all my lyrics in my phone or, um, you know, just when I'm cruising around, if a melody pops into my head, you gotta put it on voice notes or if an idea pops in, I'll, I'll put them down on, in, the, uh, in the notes. Tanya from Cleveland. How did vacation come together and then the remix? Uh, I was actually walking my dog and the chorus came to me out of nowhere. That, and ideas will come, like sometimes I gotta think about ideas and I'm like, I'm sitting down to write, I'm sitting down to, to, to make music and I wanna be creative and, and I really sit there and you think about things and other times it'll just be inspirational, just come out of nowhere. And I was just walking my dog, not thinking about anything. And, Hey, 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 I'm on vacation every single day because I love my occupation. I was like, okay, voice memo. Took it to the studio with Jonas, the producer Jonas, me and Duddy and Jonas, and he started playing piano, and I think the melody came from that, and then, I mean, the chorus kind of already sets up the rest of the song, what it's gonna be about, and then from there, we put it out, and uh, our fans loved it. It was a fan favorite, and four years later, TikTok and social media got a hold of it, and now, you know, it's kind of, kind of, getting some legs and getting picked up worldwide. So we're super stoked and we have been to South America and we knew we have a lot of fans down there. So we got this artist, John Z, to come do a kind of a Spanish remix and a Latin America remix. And uh, we hope you enjoy and check out the video when it comes out. Yardley from Philadelphia. What do you like most about the instrument you play? I like that I don't have to carry it around and I don't have to load it and I don't have to, I kind of got to tune it, but I don't play any instruments. I just sing. Megan from Minneapolis. This is a good question. Favorite queen song. I wanna, uh, automatically, I wanna say Fat Bottom Girls. 
There's so many good ones. But I think that might be the one that I like had the most fun like partying, putting on the jukebox like at the bar, drinking and playing pool, putting on fat bottom girls, singing at the top of your lungs. Christy from Birmingham. I just went to see the Hella Mega Tour. Have you seen Green Day, Weezer, or Fall Out Boy perform? So you're missing one band from that tour, and that is the Interrupters. And Amy from the Interrupters is featured on our new track with Travis Barker. You gotta go check it out. The Interrupters are one of my favorite bands. They are also friends of ours that we've known for a decade, and they are so good. Their live show is insane, and I'm stoked that they're on that tour. We have seen Green Day, and we have seen Weezer. We've been on, um, I think, one or two festivals with Weezer. And uh, we got to go to a Green Day show with a producer, friend of ours, Rob Cavallo, and it was inspiring. Natalie from New Jersey. What was the biggest surprise for you when you first got into the industry? Something that you weren't expecting? This is a great question because it was Napster and LimeWire and downloading. And literally we got signed to Warner Brothers and, that, and we recorded our album and we turned our album in and like that week everybody was like, Napster, free music, downloading, and Warner Brothers like, oh my god, we don't know what we're doing. Luckily, they were cool enough. They gave us our, they gave us the album, and they just said, you know, good luck, and we we went off and, and did what we did. Uh, but that was we were at the very beginning of where music went from physical copies to illegally downloading to streaming, and we didn't see that coming. Madeline from Fairfax. How many clothes do you take on tour? How long into a tour before you start borrowing clothes from your merch? I think about this. And what I try and do is simplify. So like last tour I did like button ups cause it was hot, like super thin button ups. So I was like, okay, I know we're gonna be hot. I'm only gonna wear button ups. I just got like 10 white button ups and 10 black button ups and like a couple pairs of jeans, a couple pairs of pants, vans. I just throw in a couple pairs of dirty bands and that's it. I try and like, like this tour, this is one of them. I went out, I bought like 20 white tank tops and then like my favorite pants, dirty bands. One before I did like Hawaiian shirts. So there's always like a theme to how, what I'm gonna wear that tour. And uh, it just makes it easy. And then um, a lot of the time, you know, it's hot. You just gotta like say goodbye to those shirts. Uh, I don't think, actually I know, I've never worn my own band's shirt on stage. Trish from Covington. Is there a significance to the order of the set list when you're on tour or is it random? The significance of the set list on tour is so important. The set list, the flow of the set list is everything to the show. That is like, one, it's really fun to make. Two, it's extremely difficult because you, there's a balance of new fans, middle of the road fans, and old fans, right? Old fans want you to play deep cuts, different sets every single night. They're gonna come to multiple shows. Casual, dope fans, they're there for the most popular songs. And then new fans are there for like one or two songs that they know, right? So there's that whole gambit of, of fans and you gotta please them all. So we try and look at every album and take a couple songs out of each album. And there's songs that we have to play as fans of music. I've been to a couple shows where I've seen a band and they didn't play like two or three of their biggest songs. And I can empathize with them why, maybe they're sick of it, they want to move on, but like you're, Come on, like you gotta play your hits. You have to play your hits. Uh, that's why a lot of people are there. So it's a, it's a it's a it's a tricky balance, but we enjoy it and uh, we pride ourselves on our live show. Um, we are on this tour. We are doing different sets, not exactly one hundred percent different every night, but we're adding new songs throughout the tour and we're kind of flip flopping because we did notice that with last year and the year before, we're getting multiple like 
multiple night fans that are coming. So we took that into consideration. Um, but we usually like to get one really dope set, work with our lighting engineer, our stage designer, and like really get the set tight and that's our set and that's how it's gonna be the whole tour. And now we're trying to jam more, maybe add in different songs so that the shows aren't always the same every night. But it's, like I said, it's fine balance. Ashley from Atlanta, are you still in touch with your childhood friends or school friends? I am, two of them are in the band with me, Duddy and John, I've known John since third grade, I've known Duddy since freshman year. And uh, yeah, my circle of friends here at home, I mean, I know friends like John from middle school that I still see, and, uh, and not only John, but a couple other buddies of mine, and I think like my tightest, my tight circle of friends are, are the same guys I've been hanging out with since I was 16 or 17, whether they're from my school or they were just from the area. And we didn't go to the same school, but we hung out in, in the summertime and surfed and like all my, my wedding party was all the guys I've known, you know, since I was 16 years old. And they still are my close friends. Eva from Buffalo, which one of you cracks up the others the most? Duddy and John, I think, everybody in the band is actually really funny. Everybody's hilarious, but I think Duddy and John on a daily basis get crack me up the most. Hannah from Grand Rapids, what past trends do you think should make a comeback? Dueling, white glove slap duel, uh, moats, that'd be sick, gator moats. I would have a, a, a moat around my house. Uh, manners, that'd be cool. Andrea from Montreal, uh, what are some personality traits from your parents that are starting to pop up out of you now that you're getting older? <laughs> That's actually a really funny question. Uh, I noticed, I don't know if it's personality traits, but I've noticed that like when my dad and mom had me and my brother, they like, took us around when we were little kids, uh, you know, from baby to like five. They went, saw all the national parks. We had a VW, a Westphalia. And like the older I get, the more I'm going to national parks. And the more I want to take my kid to national parks. I want to go vacation in these national parks. And the more I want to be outside, the more like, I've always surfed, I've always hiked, I've always fished, I've always loved it. But I th think you have a more appreciation for, I, I find myself being called to the mountains a lot more at the same time, because I, I talked to my dad about this, at the same age and time that my dad did. And I, I've noticed that I'm stealing some of his books and they're like Western books. Like, I don't know, but personality traits, I'm not sure. We're pretty different. Molly from Knoxville. Any artist you would have liked to induct into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I don't know. Uh, if Bob Marley's not in there, I don't know who's in or who's not. Uh, Chelsea from Columbus. This is a good question. In the age of social media and being constantly connected, how do you set healthy boundaries between your work life and your personal life? I definitely have gotten to the point where it wasn't healthy that I was just sitting on social media all day, especially on the road, because you have so much time, even whether drives on the tour bus or just, there's a lot of hurry up and wait, um, where it wasn't healthy, so I had to check that. And I think this job, uh, it can go either way. It can make it easier or hard. But when I get home from tour and I know we don't have anything to do for two weeks and I have two weeks off, I can just, you know, call me if it's an emergency and I can just put that thing down and spend time with my family and my friends. And that's what I've been doing and it works. And now, you know, it's a thing where it's part of your job to be on social media. Um, and you just kind of have to come to terms with that. You have to say, okay, this isn't healthy for me and I don't do it responsibly and I like want that dopamine all day and you're just sitting on there or you're like, you know, part of me is into this and I can post a couple things, you know, a couple times a week, like, or not. I don't know, you know, it's just, everything's, everything is balance. Uh, but I do think it makes it kind of easy for us because we can go out to work and I can just post, 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 shows, shows, shows. I'm on the road, my family's back at home. That's the only thing I have to concentrate on. We're making videos, we're making content posting videos of the shows, posting photos, and then they can get home and kind of chill out a little bit. Emily from Philadelphia, one song that will always remind you of childhood. Oh, probably Kaya from 
Bob Marley, or Cream from Wu Tang. I don't know why, but those are the two that popped up. Or maybe Beastie Boys, like Slow and Low or something, because that was the first tape I ever bought. And if I go back further, there's a song called Brazil by Jeff Mulder when I was a little kid and there's a whistle in it and I loved it and my, I made my dad play it all the time on vinyl. Mel from Memphis, is there a piece of concert merch that if you were a fan that you would buy at one of your shows? There, um, our merch is our merch is bonkers. I'm, I'm a fan of our merch. I just don't really necessarily want to wear on my band stuff but man i think every tour there's a couple pieces that i'm blown away by we um we actively as band members seek out artists that we like whether it's through instagram or just wherever we find them um me and john a lot of times are, are in with our um, our merch company like getting new artists and actually talking to them uh, personally uh and then like other bands like john mayer has the most fire merch of all time always you're crushing it. Always. John Mayer's merch. I always want to buy John Mayer's merch. Uh, Alright, I'll do this one. Trisha from Cincinnati, what have you learned most about yourself during the pandemic? Okay, uh, to be honest, one, I learned how important family is, for sure. Getting to be able to be home for a year. I said it earlier, I think maybe, but we've been touring for 17 years. This is all we know. And being home, this is the first time we've been home for actually 12 months in almost 17 years. Uh, and that really opened my eyes to how important family is, how important balancing tour life and being home is, um, how important my job is to me. Uh, and it really opened my eyes to um, things that were bothering me about myself in my job and how I could take care of them, and I, and I have. Just vocally, uh, I've been having issues the last couple of years, so I, I'm got that under control and it's making me a lot more happy. Um, I think, and I don't know about, what did I learn about myself? I still love video games. And if you put me in a room with nothing to do for a really long time, I'll bang out like a hundred hours, easy. Give me a game that's 300 hours, it's good enough. I got you. Um, but yeah, I think just how important family is. I think that was the big one. Diana from Toronto, what's the best advice that a music lyric has ever given you? What? Duh. <laughs> it ain't no um, fun if the homies can't have none. Melanie from Southfield, and you don't have to use that. <laughs> Melanie from Southfield, Michigan. Which one of the following would you pick if you got a free lifetime supply? Phone charger, toothpaste, nail clippers, motor oil, or socks? Mm, motor oil, for sure. I got a 1967 Pontiac Grand Prix sitting in the garage. Keep her lubed up. Melissa from Williamsport, PA. What was your first cell phone? I mean, I don't know the name of it, but it was a little blue, like little brick, little blue guy with just like the snake game on it, like 8-bit and just... <laughs> uh, Beth from Wheeling, if you send out a text to the group who responds first, I despise group texts. I hate group texts. Hitting, I'm the dude that like, I get on a group text and I just hit that leave conversation button and it's so rewarding 
and then I get on a group text and then people start liking things and it's like, oh, this person liked this thing, this person liked this thing. And then you go to hit that leave conversation button and you realize not everybody has an iPhone and you can't do it. Bro. No. Oh. Uh, Sue from Buffalo. Do you make sure you take all the free good stuff from your dressing rooms after your show is done? Food, towels, presents, soap, etc. We don't get presents. So if people want to bring us presents, that's cool. Actually, we get presents sometimes. We like cookies and cake. And then we're like, are these normal cookies? These brownies, please write on here if these brownies are normal brownies. And, uh, but with all the booze, all the food, everything that we have in our dressing room is taken, put on the tour bus, uh, and we plan ahead on our rider. Because if we know we have days off, or we have like long drives, or we know that it just might be a weird shows where there's no catering or whatever, we'll have like sandwich stuff and food that we can make on the bus, all the booze is taken. The by, by the end of the tour, at this point, we used to be able to go through all booze. There wasn't a drop left. Now, we pulled back on the partying, so usually all the band members have a couple nice bottles to go home with. Kim from Cleveland, what is your favorite musical memory while growing up? My mom turned me on to Billie Holiday when I was young, like, I don't know, maybe 10 or something like that. And she had this little box, this, this lavender little booklet of two Billie Holiday CDs. And I'd never heard anything like that in my life. And like, the emotion I felt, like the sadness, like I didn't know music could, could allow you to be that sad and feel that much emotion and like something about her voice. But me and my mom used to just lay in front of the speakers. We had a, a record player and we had these cool old school speakers and we used to just lay, whether it was the daytime or the nighttime, we used to just lay and listen to like every song she had. And I, I, I recently just remembered that in a different interview and I'm really stoked on it. Jane from Boston, in your high school yearbook, you most, <laughs> You most likely to. In my high school yearbook, I got Biggest Flirt, and I also got Celebrity Lookalike, because for some reason in high school, I looked like Ryan Reynolds. And I had like nice gelled hair, and I kind of did look like Ryan Reynolds when I look back. If I don't have the yearbook anymore. If somebody can find it, find it. I obviously don't look like that handsome man now. Like maybe if, his brother joined a commune and like did a bunch of acid and lived on the beach and that would maybe be me but I don't see it anymore I grew out of I grew out of my Ryan Reynolds face and I'm a little sad about it cuz I'm a fan of that guy thanks for watching our most requested live ask anything chat thanks Romeo for having us on to talk about our song vacation